So this is the live situation that we have with this uh, canine which is uh, slightly mobile. And uh, now I'm, of course, I'm ready to gently extract it, but of course that will not be that difficult. Okay, no, Davy immediately. Thank you. Wow, how good I am this morning. So I'm checking the quality of the of the so-called socket here. We have some soft tissue on the palatal. So now I'm ready to start the drilling procedure. So we will enter the palatal wall just like this. and then slightly and slowly correct the orientation. Of the drill. Sounding of the bone, everything is perfect. And we will check with the surgical guide if it is uh, okay, like this. And we will check if the direction is good. It's not a problem, so that's that's okay. I think everybody sees it now. And also, what is important is that this surgical guide has been prepared in with the f uh, uh, let's say an ideal position of the final position of the of the color of the tools, like this. Meaning that uh, my reference point will not be the soft tissue as they are at the moment but rather a, m a slightly more coronal position, which will be my reference point for the placement of my implant. So that means that I will later on add some connective tissue there just to cover the color. So this is the uh, 2.4, 2.8 drill, the drill number two. Okay. So once again it starts slightly palatal and correct my position later on. Okay. And now I will go for a third thread because the bone is quite dense. 2.8, 3.2. I do not like putting too much torque on, on my implants. I'm not keen on compressing the bone. Good. That's it. I'm going to place a 13 millimeter uh, long implant. And we will bring this implant on the hand screwdriver. And with this implant, I will first slightly, that's better like that, slightly enter the implant into the palatal wall like this. And then I will slowly, I will slowly change the direction and go deeper. So this is the right direction now. We will check the orientation with the surgical guide. And you, s you will see that my direction is okay. Okay, just like that, not bad. Okay, so we can continue. And you will see that uh, my th at the moment my, my torque is still quite high. So I will come back slightly just to decrease the pressure, because I don't like having too much pressure. And that's still a bit too much. Okay. So this is the position that we want. And we see you see that we have a aspirant, Chantal. 
we have an indication of uh, here on the, the implant driver, we have an indication of uh, a distance uh, of three millimeters between this line and the implant top. And actually, I would like to rebuild the gingiva till that point. And here I'm about at the bone level. Yes, exactly. So that's okay. There it is. And we'll check if the torque is not too high. Actually, I don't like having more than 40 Newton centimeters. And you see that now it's, it's much better. It's much too high, sorry. So we will decrease it slightly. So I don't like exceeding about 40, 40, 45 Newton centimeters. I think that's good like that. Now I'm going to do, uh, to use what we call the bone mill. So it's uh, because we, we are quite sure here that we have some uh, bone on the palatal on, on the palatal that will impair the placement of our abutment, a static abutment. So this instrument is very easy to use. So it is guided by this uh, kind of uh, healing abutment. And you can just insert this drill, and that's it. So the, 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 the bone, the excessive bone, the excess of bone has been removed. We just remove this piece, and we will be ready to go one step further. That is the placement of our uh, zirconia abutment, or at least a try-in of this uh, zirconia abutment. This is the abutment I do intend to try in. It is an aesthetic zirconia he, um, uh, abutment. Okay, we will try it in. Yeah. On his glass. Okay, it looks quite nice. So now we will use this. Uh, diamond kit for a Procera uh, Zirconia abutment. Merci. Slightly adjust uh, shape of the crown. So now <coughs> we are able to settle the provisional crown quite correctly. And I will uh, just uh, fill the, the screw hole with uh, some wax. Okay, so we are now ready to renine it. So I slowly reline it with quite a, a thick resin. We'll hold it on the implant, wait for the hardening of the resin, and then go out of the mouth. No, the screwdriver. Okay, now we're going to adapt that. So I'm removing the excess of uh, resin here. Excesses. And um, just after that we will check on the abutment holder. Okay, it's not bad. It's not too bad, and now I'm going to adapt 
the resin uh, at the limits, just to have the resin everywhere till the limits. Uh, I'd like to have some, yes, thank you. Now we are ready to place back the abutment into the mouth. So I'm setting the abutment. You have seen the engagement into the X, the apical X. I think that it's very important that people know we have to engage the hex apically. That's it. I, I'm going to just to show you that I will tighten it um, with this uh, prosthetic torque wrench, which goes to 35 and not to 70. So I have uh, tightened it by hand up to now and engage this screwdriver like this. Yeah. And you see that I was at about 15 Newton centimeters by hand. I'm increasing slightly now. And I'm at 35 and it's okay. Good. So now we are going to cement the crown. So I will use a very limited amount of cementation material. That's it. That's it. And the crown is now seated. And you will be able to see, I think that's interesting, the excess of cementation material here by that has gone out from uh, the vent hole on the palatal aspect. So that's it.